Police are giving an update on yesterday's deadly shooting where at least four people died, including a two, including a young child. Let's listen in here. Dan Adams, Orange Police Chief Tom Casella, Orange Mayor Mark Murphy, and Orange County District Attorney Todd Spitzer. To start, I will be recapping the tragic event that occurred last night, and I will be providing additional information that has become available. Last night at approximately 5.30 p.m., the Orange Police Department received multiple calls of shots fired in the area of 200 West Lincoln in the city of Orange. Officers arrived on scene and determined shots were actively being fired in the business complex at 202 West Lincoln. Officers immediately approached the building, however, were unable to enter the courtyard due to the fact the gates had been locked from the inside. It appears the suspect used a bicycle type cable lock to secure the gates from the inside on both the north and the south sides of the courtyard. Two officers engaged the sus suspect from outside of the gates and an officer involved shooting occurred. Officers were unable, were, I'm sorry, officers were able to force entry through the gates and entered the courtyard. Upon entry, officers located a suspect who was injured and he was taken into custody. Additionally, officers located two victims in the courtyard area, one of which was a nine-year-old boy who was deceased. An adult female who had also been shot was found with the boy. Officers immediately rendered aid to her. That female victim, along with a suspect, were each transported to a local hospital where they both remain in critical but stable condition. Officers then quickly began a systematic search of the business complex and located three deceased victims. One female adult was located upstairs on an outdoor landing. One male was located inside one office building. One adult female was also located inside of a separate office building. The suites where those victims were located have been identified as the Unified Homes business. Investigators have recovered several items at the scene, including a semi-automatic handgun and a backpack containing pepper spray, handcuffs, and ammunition, which we believe belonged to the suspect. Our initial response included approximately 20 police officers and was followed by approximately 30 investigators, along with the FBI and ATF. We are also working with the Orange County District Attorney's Office, who responded to handle the officer-involved shooting portion of the incident. Our investigation is still ongoing at this location, and the surrounding streets in the area remain closed at the time. We are continuing to learn more information as the day progresses. At this time, I cannot release the identity of any of the victims due to the fact next of kin have not yet all been notified. I can confirm the deceased are one male adult, two female adults, and one nine-year-old boy. One female adult remains at the hospital along with the suspect. The suspect has been identified as 44-year-old Amenadab Gaxiola Gonzalez with a last known address in Fullerton. A photo will be provided at the conclusion of this conference. The preliminary motive is believed to be related to a business and personal relationship which existed between the suspect and all of the victims. It appears all of the adults were connected either by business or a personal relationship, and this was not a random act of violence. The child is believed to be the son of one of the victims who worked at the business. Like I mentioned earlier, as soon as next of kin notifications are made, we are hopeful to be able to release the names of the deceased victims. To reiterate, this appears to be an isolated incident and we believe everyone knew each other, whether through a business or personal relationship. Investigators will remain on scene throughout the day until the investigation is complete. If anyone has any information about the incident, we would ask them to call the Orange Police Department. I will now turn this over to Orange Police Chief Tom Casella. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Amat. Our hearts go out to the victims, their families, our community, and our police department and firefighters. I want to assure everybody that every resource necessary is being committed to this investigation. I want to thank our law enforcement partners, fire department personnel who responded to this horrific event. Finally, I couldn't be more proud of our orange police officers who responded and engaged the suspect and the detectives who are investigating this crime. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Lieutenant Amat back up. I would now like to invite up our Orange County District Attorney, Todd Spitzer. Um, it's not really a good morning, even though it's beautiful outside. This is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and it appears that a little boy died in his mother's arms as she was trying to save him during this horrific massacre. I want to thank Chief Casella and his staff and Lieutenant Amat and all the investigators and police that responded. Our hearts today go out to the victims, and I'm here to tell you that we're going to do everything in our power in the Orange County District Attorney's Office to get justice for these families. And we pray for one of the victims who is still in the hospital who underwent emergency procedures. Thank God no Orange police officers were injured or killed. They arrived at this scene apparently to find the front and the back wrought iron gates locked and secured, which meant that they were not able to get into the courtyard premises or the locations in order to try to secure and take care of the suspect. And we know that shots had been fired before their arrival. We know the suspect also apparently had been wounded as well, and that investigation is ongoing about what caused his injury. But those officers had to engage the suspect from outside the premises until bolt cutters could be brought to the scene in order for them to gain entry to the premises. In the meantime, horrific rampage was going on in offices and people were dying or were being shot and that is still obviously under investigation. I want to explain why the district attorney's office is on the location at scene. You saw our mobile command. We're presently conducting two operations. One is the officer-involved shooting. Anytime a police officer engages with deadly force in the field, that is investigated by the Orange County District Attorney's Office except for the city of Huntington Beach. The reason is simple. We need to ensure that there are officers from the DA's office who investigate other officers and have nothing to do with or and no connection to the agency that's being investigated. That is for transparency and objectivity. The other reason we're here is because of the criminal investigation of the shooting itself by this alleged suspect, Mr. Gonzalez. Throughout the night, my prosecutors were working on search warrants and other aspects of advice to the investigative team. And we believe we will be getting the submission for a request for filing in the next few days. I'm here to make something very, very clear. Mr. Gonzalez is eligible for the death penalty. This is a special circumstances case. There were multiple victims. And we are now presently looking at whether his locking of the front and the back gates constituted a lying in wait, which would also be eligible for death. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here today and getting the word out. And I have to tell you that I think the public wants to know this was not random. The randomness of violence could obviously really scare an entire community. It appears, and we'll know a lot more as more facts come out, but it appears that the suspects, as Lieutenant Ahmad indicated, were known, the victims were known, they were all known to each other. It is a horrible, horrible tragedy that Mr. Gonzalez made a decision to use deadly force to deal with issues he was dealing with apparently in his life. 
but he will suffer and face the consequences. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to invite up our City of Orange Mayor, Mark Murphy. I'm sorry that we're all here meeting like this over this issue. I think first and foremost, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of the victims. Um, I can't even imagine what they're going through now, but I ask the entire community to put those thoughts and prayers in support and lift up those victims' uh, families. I, uh, you know, I'm extraordinarily proud of our police department, our fire department, our safety services, all of our brothers and sisters that came to the aid on this call, the district attorney's office and Todd Spitzer for the rapid response, the effective response and the minimization of harm that took place last evening. With all that said, I ask you again, please thoughts and prayers and understand that uh, this will be pursued to the fullest extent. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, we will try to answer a couple of questions. There was a Mr. Spitzer made a mention that the young boy was being held or was near, you said, mother. That had not been mentioned prior. Are we to believe that the one male victim killed was the boy's father? Can you discuss that at all? <clears throat> The distinctive relationships in that particular incident are still under investigation. At least at this time, it is believed that there was one of the women victims who was embracing that child uh, apparently after he was shot. And that's how they were found. Uh, what their relationship is exactly, it's still under investigation. I don't want to say for sure, but that is the belief at least that the child was being uh, protected uh, during that act uh, before he passed. Was Mr. Gonzalez a known entity to law enforcement? Was there any restraining orders filed by any of the victims beforehand? So one of the things I'll be looking at in terms of deciding whether or not Mr. Gonzalez is eligible for death or life without the possibility of parole, assuming we can prove um, all four murders in a court of law after presenting the evidence to a trier of fact. Assuming we can do all those things, um, then it will be up to me ultimately to make a decision. One of the factors that I am required by law to look at is, is criminal history. I'm not prepared right now to discuss that um, at some point in time as we go through the evaluative process on whether or not we'll be seeking death or life without the possibility of parole. Those facts uh, will be shared uh, publicly or at least in a court of law. I'm not at liberty today to discuss his criminal history, but I also want to make something clear. I'm not inferring by what I said that he has a criminal history. So please do not report anything about his criminal history. We're j we are not prepared to discuss that today, but we're not inferring he has one by the absence of that answer. Well, United, United Homes, what is it? What well, 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 I, I, when it you said there was a personal and professional relationship between the different people involved? Can you expand more on that? Did the suspect have any kind of personal or romantic relationship with anyone involved? And what was the nature of the professional relationship? At this point, the details of their relationship is still under investigation, but we can confirm that there was a business and personal relationship between the suspect and the victims. What is United Homes? 